Very good evening from Downing Street, where in two days' time, Theresa May will be installed as Britain's new Prime Minister. The news followed a decision by Andrea Leadsom to withdraw from the race for Conservative leader, saying she didn't have enough support to form a stable government. Mrs May will take over from David Cameron on Wednesday, and she's already underlined that for her, Brexit means Brexit, and that she'll be working to get the best deal for Britain to leave the EU. We'll be looking in more detail at Mrs May's political outlook and asking what kind of Prime Minister she's likely to be. But first, our political editor, Laura Koonsberg, reports on another day of unexpected turns at Westminster. Our next Prime Minister, the Tories' new leader. I am honoured and humbled to have been chosen by the Conservative Party to become its leader. I would like to pay tribute to the other candidates during the election campaign and I would like to pay tribute to Andrea Leadsom for the dignity that she has shown today. After the anger and arguments of the referendum campaign and its brutal aftermath, even to make her party work will be quite a feat. Brexit means Brexit, and we're going to make a success of it. Yeah. Second, we need to unite our country. And third, we need a strong, new, positive vision for the future of our country. A vision of a country that works not for the privileged few, but that works for every one of us. Because we're going to give people more control over their lives. And that's how, together, we will build a better Britain. Thank you. This private politician will take the biggest job in public life, without a vote even by her party's members, let alone the general public. <laughs> Theresa May's in because she walked out. Just before 11 this morning, the rumour mill began to whirl. Was Andrea Leadsom, the Eurosceptic's darling, about to quit? The grim faces of her supporters confirmed it. For me personally, to have won the support of 84 of my colleagues last Thursday was a great expression of confidence, for which I am incredibly grateful. Nevertheless, this is less than 25% of the parliamentary party. And after careful consideration, I do not believe this is sufficient support to lead a strong and stable government should I win the leadership election. I have, however, concluded that the interests of our country are best served by the immediate appointment of a strong and well-supported Prime Minister. I am therefore withdrawing from the leadership election and I wish Theresa May the very greatest success. Why have you changed your mind, Mrs Ledson? There was disbelief in one of Westminster's impossibly immaculate side streets. Why is she withdrawing? Some of her supporters are furious about what they call the abuse that was thrown at her, especially after she suggested in an interview that she would be a good Prime Minister, partly because she has children and Theresa May does not. One of her team told me simply the abuse was too much. With 199 MPs supporting Theresa May, we think that uh, it, would be in, it is in the best interest of the country to say now that we should withdraw. Has she been bullied out of it then? That's what it sounds like you're suggesting. I wouldn't want to put it in those terms. I think the reality is that we face very sophisticated opponents in this contest. They have very carefully positioned her as something which she's not. And now if we were to continue, the damage would be too great. The level of personal abuse that was being directed at her over the last week and it seems in the last few days has been something which I have... I've been uh, rather appalled about. Even if Mrs May was the overwhelming favourite, we should have had a contest, and therefore I'm disappointed. I'm sure Andrew has made this decision for very good reasons, patriotic reasons, uniting the party, all those sort of things. I'm sure there's a lot of pressure, but I can't help denying that I'm disappointed. It's 20 past 12 now. Andrea Leadsom's surprise decision to move out of the leadership race means that in the next couple of days, the new Prime Minister might be in number 10. Next stop after this melee, over to the Tory party machine to decide what happens to the government next. And they didn't waste any time. Following the decision of Mrs Andrea Leadsom to withdraw from the Conservative leadership contest, the Right Honourable Mrs Theresa May is the only remaining candidate. Could Theresa May be Prime Minister by the end of this week? Uh, we'll conclude our internal process. There's also a constitutional 
uh, process uh, to be gone through. In the space of less than half an hour, Andrea Leadsom has quit the race and the Tory party have confirmed Theresa May will be the next Prime Minister. Are you looking then at the faces of some of Theresa May's new cabinet? Tory MPs who'd given overwhelming support and who were ready for a long campaign for number 10. But they don't need it now. And he won't spend a moment longer than is polite in Downing Street before leaving for the final time. With these changes, we now don't need to have a prolonged period of transition. And so tomorrow I will chair my last cabinet meeting. On Wednesday, I will attend the House of Commons for Prime Minister's questions. And then after that, uh, I expect to go to the palace and offer my resignation. So we'll have a new Prime Minister in that building behind me uh, by Wednesday evening. Thank you very much. To lose office must be painful, but perhaps with it some light relief. A hum, a tune from the Prime Minister. Do, 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 do. Right. We won't call him that for long. Laura Kunzberg, BBC News, Westminster. Well, earlier this morning, Theresa May had been in Birmingham launching her campaign to be the next Conservative leader, promising to lead a government working, as she said, not for the privileged few, but for everyone. Mrs May played a relatively low-key role in the Remain campaign in the recent referendum. She also sparked controversy by saying that she could not guarantee that EU citizens living in the UK would be allowed to stay. Our deputy political editor, John Pienaar, reports now on Theresa May's political outlook. Just moments before she knew the job was hers, Theresa May opened up a little. She doesn't do showy, thinks Britain's had enough surprises, but her mission was a big one. So we bring people back together, rich and poor, north and south, urban and rural, young and old, male and female, black and white, sick and healthy, public sector, private sector. Reaching beyond the Tory tribe, she'd be a one-nation leader of a country that works for everyone. There'd be curbs on corporate pay, more people power in boardrooms. We're going to have not just consumers represented on company boards, but employees as well. Her reputation for toughness was already established. A lot of Tories hated it when she told them, in opposition, the wider public couldn't stand them. Our base is too narrow, and so occasionally are our sympathies. You know what some people call us? The nasty party. And a police conference liked her even less when, as Home Secretary, she told them they had to change. The murder of Lee Rigby by Islamist extremists shocked the country, but her handling of the threat of terrorism helped define Theresa May as steady on security policy. Deporting the extremist preacher Abu Qatada after a legal battle lasting nearly a decade was for her a moment of triumph. <laughs> Theresa May never liked David Cameron's pledge to get net immigration below 100,000, but some thought her too tough in getting numbers down when colleges and businesses wanted more. Now, wherever they are, they're all behind her. I've sat around the cabinet table with her for six years and she's got the integrity, the strength and the leadership that our country needs. And in Britain, here in New York, around the world, the British economy needs certainty. So I think it's in everyone's interest that she takes up that position as Prime Minister in the coming days. Will Theresa May ever earn a mention among Britain's most notable leaders? Who knows? But she's coming into power at a more testing time than any since the Second World War. And her mission of making her party appeal to places and people it's failed to reach in decades could easily fail. Tonight, the party will rally round and should enjoy something of a political honeymoon. But over coming months and years, the harsh realities of government can only compare harshly to the dreams of leadership that she nursed with her future husband at her side as a young woman. John Pienaar, BBC News, Westminster. Well, Theresa May, who is 59, was born in Eastbourne. She entered Parliament for Maidenhead in Berkshire back in 1997. She's been at the Home Office since 2010, the second longest serving Home Secretary since the Second World War. Our political correspondent, Alex Forsyth, looks at her life before and after she came to Westminster. Credited with a quiet competence and steely core, Theresa May has long been tipped as a potential Prime Minister. A vicar's daughter from a middle-class family in Oxfordshire, she went to a state school before studying geography at Oxford University, where she met her future husband, Philip. Married for 36 years, she called him her rock when her father died in a car crash and her mother of multiple sclerosis just a few months later. Good morning, it's a very nice day. Politics was a long-held ambition. After working at the Bank of England, she made it to Westminster, 
Elected as Maidenhead's MP in 1997, her local party still proud of the choice. We interviewed her and I just thought, yes, down to earth, speaks her mind and, and listens to you. She, she just had a very, the, the, the right attitude. Thought of as smart, tough, shrewd, Theresa May rose through the Tory ranks, a woman at the upper echelons of the party who refused to let her gender play a part. I've never experienced any barriers within the Conservative Party, I must say. I've never felt that I've had any problems as a woman. Hi, hello, nice to see you. Known for keeping her own council, not schmoozing Westminster's tea rooms, some have called Mrs May cold and aloof. But she commands respect and loyalty from many colleagues who've worked alongside her. Whilst there are huge numbers of very competent ministers out there, what was different in the Home Office was that she was actually adored. In fact, it wouldn't be too much to say that she was loved by them. She's a brilliant leader. She changes her mind when the facts change around her. But once she has set her mind on a course that she knows is right, she knows is right, she will not divert. Even being diagnosed with diabetes didn't dent her stride, although the kitten heels once did. Theresa May's tenacity has led some to call her difficult. In a rare open interview, she explained her motivation. I don't think I've got a ruthless streak. I don't have an ism, other than conservatism. I just want to get on and do the best that I can. I mean, that was something my parents very much brought me up to believe in, that whatever you're doing, try your hardest, do your best. And as of today, her best will be required. In her own words, Mrs May is one to get on with the job. Now she has to prove she has the metal for the biggest job of all. Alex Forsyth, BBC News. Well, here in Downing Street, I'm joined by uh, our political editor, Laura Kunzberg, and our economics editor, Kamal Ahmed. Laura, I'm bound to say it's less than three weeks since the referendum and we have a new Prime Minister. Indeed, and do you remember on the eve of the referendum, Hugh, we thought this campaign has shaken everything up. All the pieces of politics have been tossed into the air and we don't know where they're going to land. Well, now we do know where they are going to land, for the Conservative Party at least. And, you know, a senior Tory said to me tonight, if Geoffrey Archer had gone to his publisher with the plot of what has happened today, he'd have been sent packing. They'd have said that's completely improbable. Nobody could believe such a story. And yet that is what has happened. Andrea Leadsom's decision, which was for a mixture of motivations for her to pull out of the race, jackknife the Tory contest, which we expected to hap happen over a couple of months. The whole thing has gone at a million miles an hour. And now, instead of in the middle of September, by Wednesday night, someone else will be in charge there. And a very, very different kind of politician and prime minister to boot. Theresa May is not a flash politician. She's all about being serious, all about showing that she's calm and sober and takes time to work yeah. things through. And I think there will be a difference in one big way that is this. Politicians for a long time, successive prime ministers really, have tried to sort of almost as look as if they're the, pub the public's friend, the kind of person you could sit down and have a pint and a chat with. That's not Theresa May's style, and I think that alone is going to give things a very different feel around here. Indeed. Come on, Laura, they're saying very different style. But what about policy? Are we expecting a different direction of policy, notably economic policy? I think it has been interesting today. Of course, we can forget in all this political excitement that Theresa May's big test as the new Prime Minister will be economic performance, particularly after the referendum vote. She actually laid out some quite interesting and factually detailed policies today, quite radical. She spoke about understanding that growth had seemed to be for the privileged few, hadn't been for the ordinary person in the street, despite them working as hard as they could. She said that she wanted to see things like workers' representatives on business boards. She said that she wanted to see shareholders be much more tough on remuneration for chief executives. She also said she wanted to see chief executives pay published and then compared to the pay of average workers in that business. Now, some people might say, hang on a minute, I sort of recognise this language, and they'd be right. 2011, Ed Miliband, Labour Party conference, said that business needed to reform. He said he wasn't being anti-business, but he was being anti-business as usual. Theresa May used a lot of the same language today. She wants a very big tent in the centre of British politics. Politics, and she set herself a rather hefty economic challenge. The test won't simply be, she seems to be saying, whether or not the economy grows or doesn't grow, but if it grows, it's got to grow for everybody. Everybody has to feel the advantage of any economic growth that comes post the referendum. 
All right, Kamal, thanks very much for now. And Laura, we'll talk again later. Thanks very much. Laura Kinsberg there and uh, Kamal Ahmed. Well, the decision on uh, who should lead the Conservative Party was meant to be taken, not by Conservative MPs, but by the party's 150,000 members in a ballot to be held in the weeks ahead. But Mrs Ledsom's decision to leave the race today means that party members will not have a formal say. So our correspondent Danny Savage has been asking activists in Harrogate for their views on today's events. North Yorkshire, England's largest county and overwhelmingly conservative. With only one hat left in the ring for Tory leader, what do party members think of not having a vote in the matter? These are three of about 150,000 who would have had a say. Do you think Conservative members will be disappointed that they don't have a chance to vote on the next leader? I think some members of the party will feel a bit cheated and will feel that Andrea has thrown the towel in too early, really. It's important that we have a Prime Minister going ahead that supported the idea of us leaving the EU. I would have voted for Theresa anyway had it come out to the membership. Uh, I think uh, the news that Andrea has pulled out today means that we can install Theresa as our leader and Prime Minister in, in a much shorter time period. And I think that's very good for, for the country. Is there some disappointment at grassroots level that people in the party won't get a vote on this matter? Oh, I suppose there will be. I, mean, so I would have liked to have a vote, but I think you have to put the country first and the party first. And I think it's in the interests of the, of the country, of everyone, that we're making a decision quickly. But what do the Tory faithful think about the party's new uncontested leader? Theresa May was a Remainer. That's right. Lots of Tories voted to leave. Yes. Do you think she can unite the party? I think so, yes. I think she, well, hopefully. And uh, um, she's a, a very experienced lady for, in government. I know that she said that she's going to operate the Brexit ASAP. I think it's, um, it's going to be incredibly difficult for somebody who believed in the Remain camp to do that. I'm, I'm not quite sure how it's all going to work. So no great discontent in the broad acres of Yorkshire over the new Conservative leader. But that doesn't mean there aren't some concerns. Danny Savage, BBC News, Harrogate. Well, as we've been saying, Theresa May was on the Remain side of the referendum debate, though she didn't play a very prominent part. But she now faces the task of negotiating the UK's departure from the European Union. She's insisted, as we said earlier, that Brexit means Brexit. But uh, has that convinced Leave voters that she's going to deliver what they want? Our correspondent Ed Thomas reports from Great Yarmouth, which voted 70% in favour of leaving. A new journey begins. But is everyone on board? Like many seaside towns, Great Yarmouth voted overwhelmingly for change. Here, they bet against Europe. So what do people think about Theresa May? as their next Prime Minister. I'm a bit apprehensive of what might happen. With so, Theresa May as Prime yeah, Minister? Yeah. yeah. She says Brexit means Brexit. Well, it should do, because that's what the democratic vote of the country was. Theresa May, Prime Minister. Yeah, I, think, I think the opposition one, what's her name? The other one. Let's um, Should have been better, because she's an outer and not an inner. Change is happening quickly, and some here are unsure what happens next. We all voted out and it would be a worry if we was to be put back in. I think that might cause some aggro, to be honest. But well, Theresa May has said that Brexit means Brexit to her. Yeah, good. Good. Then, yeah, we're all happy then. <laughs> so I'm not sure whether she'll be able to be impartial. But she has said to her Brexit means Brexit. Well, I hope that's the case then. You a little one. But there are other voices here, like Janet and Joyce. They voted Leave and believe Theresa May can mend divides post-Brexit. I think you've got to try and get it to, to appeal to everybody Theresa. as a unity, yes, definitely. And, th and that's what Theresa May represents to you? Yes, she does, yes, and I hope it will happen. Well, I'm hoping she will bring us all together and, you know, do, do the best job that she possibly can. People here, like elsewhere, had no say in choosing the next Prime Minister. But speak to those who voted to leave the European Union, and many demand that their voices are heard. She's taken this on. 
And maybe the toughest audience of all, UKIP supporters like Paul, Donna and John. Is the UKIP faithful happy, Theresa May, Prime Minister? I think she's got to prove herself. If she can invoke Article 50 straight away and get us a really good deal coming out of Europe, then I think everyone will be happy. Well, she should not deliver at all regarding immigration and what sort of deal will she get us with uh, regards to that with the EU? Now we need to forget about remain and leave and all concentrate on making Great Britain, all of us, what we need to be and go where we need to go. And now there is clarity. Um, Theresa May will no, lead, shaping a oh, nation no, and its relationship with Europe. At Thomas, BBC News, Great Yarmouth. Let's talk about uh, reaction in other parts of the European Union. In Germany, Chancellor Merkel has urged Britain to move quickly to explain how it wants to shape its future relationship with the European Union. And uh, Mrs Merkel said that uh, Germany wanted the UK to remain an important partner. Let's talk to our Europe editor, Katja Adler, in Brussels. And what's been the reaction there, Katja? Well, the, the main response has been to watch, to wait, and only then to react. A high-level EU source said to me tonight that they will react when Theresa May actually does something. Until now, the EU establishment has stood by rather open-mouthed, watching the apparent political chaos in the UK. Theresa May now says she will respect uh, the referendum result. But you mentioned Angela Merkel there, Hugh. EU leaders are anxious to know what kind of relationship the UK wants in the future with the EU. Does Theresa May, for example, want to have full access to the European single market? If so, Angela Merkel insists, as do other European leaders, that means the UK accepting the free movement of people. That means access for all EU citizens to the UK labour market. Here in Brussels, Theresa May, from her many ministerial meetings here, is known as something of an immigration hardliner. But EU sources have also described her to me tonight uh, as a tough negotiator and also a pragmatist. It is recognised that she will probably, before she formally starts Brexit talks, want to talk to her European counterparts, perhaps with a tour of European capitals. The European Commission doesn't like that idea of informal chat, but it can't do much about it. It takes comfort from the EU conviction that once those formal talks start, the EU and not the UK under Theresa May will be in the driving seat. Katja, thank you very much. Katja Adler there, our Europe editor.